Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As we say in my country, all protocols observed. That's in Nigerian parlance, just to say, we respect you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Archer and Fred, for inviting me here. I have a very few minutes to talk about a subject that has become a driving passion for me. Um, and I believe it's critical for the survival of Africa. Um, and hopefully, as we go through uh, this presentation, you will find out what I mean, tying business to politics. But in order to do that, I have to go back into history. I have to take us back into history for the main reason that for some funny, crazy reason, Africa believes that our history only dates back to the day we got our independence. And so all our history, everything we talk about, happens to be from when we were colonized up until date. And because of that, we tend not to have a root. We tend to be rootless, we tend to be lost, and we have to drive this philosophy back into our psyche. In school, what do we learn about when we talk about history? We learn about people that we have absolutely no link to. People like Vasco, uh, Vasco da Gama, Christ, Christopher Columbus. What difference does that make to us as Africans? Yet, African history is one of the richest that you can find. But we have been mentally colonized to learn about foreign history. No one talks about Shaka the Zulu and the roots that he has brought to South Africa and Mandela moving forward. The only two countries in Africa that I know today stand proud of history. Only two that I know today. One is Ethiopia, because they argue steadfastly that they were never colonized. And the second is Egypt, because there is a visible, factual, historical legacy there that shows civilization was far ahead of the civilization of their era. On the contrary, other African countries tend to worry about colonization. So all we know are the histories of our founding fathers between 1955 and the 1960s, and the degradation of Africa from 1960 till date. Hopefully, that should change. So I fast forward to today. In today's present, what worries us the most is that we are bemused by the quality of leadership that we find across Africa. I travel a lot, and when I talk to people from different strata, different strata, from the elites down to the grassroots. And what I find is that every single one of them, when you ask what the problem is, we are very, very, very knowledgeable about the problems that we have in Africa. And almost all of them will round it down to leadership and implementation. Almost all of them. So, where are we? It's a simple case of having, I'll call it the creme de la creme. We turn our intellectual and sophisticated noses up at politics, maybe for good reason. To some, we go into business believing, believing that politics is A, dirty, that politics is stained, that politics is absolutely corrupt, that it is filled with thieves, rogues, and brigands. Maybe that's true. Maybe that's true. But there's no vacuum. There's absolutely no vacuum in life. And the only reason why you find thieves, brigands, and corrupt people is because those of us in this room have turned our backs to politics. We are to blame as much as the people that are elected or dictated to rule us, whichever you choose. So, most politicians and government officials, as we know, they're human beings like you and I. Okay? Maybe not all of them. <laughs> it's true. Simple example. If you have ever encountered a custom official at most African borders, I know in Nigeria, yeah, you would doubt if they're human beings. But I need to ask this. 
There's a phrase. I don't know if it's just for Nigeria, but I might ask. Have you heard politically exposed person? That's a phrase that the financial institutions ask us. Are you politically exposed? As far as they're concerned, we should have absolutely nothing to do with politics. Because as soon as we know someone in politics, as soon as we're talking to someone in government, then we have a problem. And this is driven hard and fast by something called KYCs. It affects us. And so for that reason, we keep away from anything that has to do with politics. We run away from it. And yet, the people who sit in political office, they are the same ones that drive the policies that dictate our business. We should be wiser. So what do we do? Each successive government, elected government, we're in a democracy, democratic Africa today. But what we find is that each government selects from within the same post, the same person, the, the people that they hand over to, and they dumb down, they dumb down the successive government. They don't want smarter people ruling them. They don't want smarter people coming into government. So they stay for ages, old men sitting in government. And when they want to hand over, they hand over to their bag boys. So we have to do something. One, we have to be active in politics. We have to go within the party structure and ensure that when they are handing over to the next generation, when they are handing over to the next person, whoever it is, it comes from within the structure. They would not come to you and I. They never come outside of the party structure. They always make the political appointments from within that party structure. So we have to become active in that. Secondly, we have to send in talent. We have to second our best talent. We are very competitive in the market. We go out, every single one of us, we go out and we recruit the best. And most of the people that we recruit, a lot of them have public sector mentality. They would like to go into the public sector, but they do not because they cannot afford the lifestyle that they want to live. Let us send them in there. We do it already in my company. Send them into the public sector, but ensure that you pay for them so that you maintain the lifestyle that they do. Next, you speak to the next generation. The next generation has to bear the burden that we carry, that we are breaking forward. We are now active in breaking frontiers and breaking barriers. But it's the next generation that will take Africa to where it needs to go. And that generation today, they're in universities, they're 20 years old, they're coming out, they're the ones that will lead us and take us exactly where we want to go. Next, we have to break borders. We talked a lot today about the mental barriers that we have. Mental borders, we are colonized mentally and economically. We have to break it completely. I find it more difficult going into African nations than I do going to any other nation in the world. Why? Why is that? When I went to Ghana, I had so much problem going into Ghana, but I've been there for the last 10, 15, uh, 10 years. In Senegal, I had to leave Senegal because they just refused to deal with an uh, Anglophone business, uh, businessman. It shouldn't be the case. We have to break those borders. If we do not break those borders, we're not going to move forward. We need to change at the top. So which means that we have to be very concerned about who rules us next. We need to be concerned about who rules us next. Our people in government, the next president, the next minister, whoever, we have to be concerned about them, which means that we have to play a part in making sure that whoever is going to rule us comes from within our sphere of influence. Because like attracts like. If you want somebody who you can sit down and talk to, who will understand exactly what you are saying, then the person has to be like you. When I sit with government officials, they do not understand what I'm talking about. They cannot understand it. So they make rules that will affect us and that cannot work for us. So next, we have to influence governance. We are all people of influence. We influence, and we influence selfishly today. We influence our businesses. We need to think wider and go out of that. So, to conclude, we need to instigate, instigate the changes that will take Africa where we need to go. To do that, there are, only, if there are a few countries. It's not a whole scale. If we want to tackle the whole problem of Africa, we will fail. So we need to do it systematically, starting from the top. Pick countries that are ready for change, where the presidents need to move and the younger generation comes in. And there are countries that are ready for that. Nigeria is ready for that. Libya is ready for that. 
Um, Kenya is ready for that. Angola is ready. Uganda is ready. Ghana is ready. Ivory Coast is ready. Ethiopia is ready. South Africa is ready. If we can engage these countries, we will change Africa. That is where we need to go, and we need to do it from the very top. Having said that, I know that if we can achieve that, then our natural resources will be guaranteed. The issues about the Chinese coming to take over everything will be a mute point. The borders will be gone. We will have leaders that can think like us, think with a private and public sector mentality, and that will be the difference. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.